Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Foreign Country Edition. We're in the foreign country of Oregon right now. They have strange customs up here. We're here for the eclipse and uh, it's kind of cool. We'll do a video on that too because it's, it's a really interesting situation. But while I was in the area, we have one of our students at Hard Rock University here, Brian, and they have a very, very challenging ore that they wanted to see if I could help them out on. And in fact, directly, I have not been able to give them any help at all. Back here in the back, you'll see we've been doing a little work with the hand panning and such. Now this ore has around five ounces to the ton or more of gold and a couple hundred ounces silver and there is zero observable free milling gold. Now, two possibilities for this. Number one is, in fact, all the gold is very fine and crystal locked. From the grind that they had, it would have to be extremely fine because they ran through an impact mill. We had you know, basically everything is 30 mesh minus, lots down to 100 mesh, and there was like nothing there. Another possibility, there is a lot of silver in this ore. There may not be any yellow gold visible, but what we may have is something called electrum. It's a gold-silver alloy. Think of white gold. Now, since we have a lot of white, shiny uh, minerals in there, it would not be very easy to detect. It is a possibility there's going to be some further research done to see if in fact there is free gold, it just doesn't look like gold. Now, there's also arsenic in this ore. That's a serious issue. You have to wear breathing protection. You have to be careful if you're using any kind of a solution dissolving anything because you're going to make a soluble arsenic compound sure. which can be extremely toxic and very difficult to get rid of. So that will take some expert uh, advice to deal with. That's above my pay grade. I don't know that much about arsenic. So therefore we're going to get some expertise. And here is one thing where Brian is got a lot of capabilities to, to get resources for zero to low cost. We're uh, less than 100 miles from Boise, right? Right. His partner lives in Boise. That is a state capital. You're going to have some kind of something, the Boise Geological Survey, I mean the, the Idaho Geological Survey, Bureau of Mines and Mineral Resources, something to that effect. There are people in that city that work for the government that work for Brian and the rest of those taxpayers. His job is to figure these things out and in many cases you can go and you can get a little free advice. If you talk nice and you ask around you find out who the people that deal with the public are and you just go in there and say hey what's with this rock or here's my analysis what do I need to, to be careful of here? That sort of thing. So you got a university there, you've got the state capitol, you've got all kinds of government agencies, and he is going to do a lot of research on that, he and his partner, to find out what kind of assistance they can get. Um, the other thing is there was more than one type of ore there. Now they have focused on what's obviously the richest, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily the easiest to make money with. So there's another couple different types of potential ores and the wall rock. They're now going to sample and see if they can find something that may have free milling gold that may be a lot simpler or whatever. But do some analysis on those other rock types. May not be as rich, may not be as plentiful, but they may be a lot more profitable with a low cost investment. A good place to get started. So that's the situation here. I haven't been able to give them a lot of direct help, but give them a lot of ideas on where to go get some help. And hopefully they'll be able to turn this into a profitable mine in the not too distant future. But you have, well let's see, your entrained value is somewhere between five and $10,000 a ton. Right. So 
There's lots of options that are theoretically possible here. They're trying to optimize it. And uh, I think they've got a lot of good ideas. They've got capability. Mm. His partner is a welder <laughs> and things like that. So I think they're going to be able to make it work. We're just trying to make it as profitable as possible. I like it. Thanks, Keith. You betcha, Appreciate Brian. you coming by. Oh, yeah. And it's a great place you got here. It's a, it's an interesting place. This is the this is Sumter. Sumter right? Bed and Breakfast. Yeah. yeah. This, he's running the Sumter Bread and Breakfast up here in <laughs> Sumter, Oregon. It's very pretty up here. Nice weather right now. We're going to have an eclipse tomorrow. Talk to you later. Keep it safe out there, and happy prospecting. So that's the situation. They got a rich ore, <coughs> a lot of money there to, to deal with, but they want to make it as efficient and as safe as possible. So if anybody out there is an expert on arsenopyrite ores and efficiently processing them, especially in the Western United States, if you could contact me, I'd appreciate it. You can do it in the comments section. Or you can email me at hardrockyou at outlook.com. But uh, I think they've got a really good possibility here. And we just need somebody who really knows their stuff to uh, maybe give them a little advice or help out or whatever. And, uh, and go from there.